going to focus on the exterior shell. And that's a very important component in green construction because that controls the heat loss and heat gain in your building. We're going to look at windows and doors. Those are openings in that shell. It's important not only to pick ones that have good insulating value, but then install them properly so you don't have leaks and gaps. The other side of that component is the actual wall system, the siding, the insulation, and that's something that Bill's going to cover. In order for this home to be green and sustainable, we really want to focus on the uh, outside shell of the home. We chose cement siding for this particular project. Uh, right behind that we have uh, Tyvek drainage wrap. Now the Tyvek drainage wrap lets any moisture that goes through the siding, and no matter how much we try to seal the water out, it'll eventually get through. So the water will hit the Tyvek, drain down behind the siding, let this product be able to dry. And on the inside of that, we have one inch of extruded polystyrene, which creates a thermal break on all the wood framework that we have inside the house. So between all of the studs on the inside, we'll have fiberglass insulation that fills the cavity completely. Installation is really key on this. And from that point, all the studs, all the framework on the inside will be covered with certain teed membrane, which is a forgivable vapor retarder. That allows any vapor, water vapor, that's inside the wall cavity be able to escape either outside or inside, depending on, on the time of year and depending on the pressures inside the wall cavity. So what we've done is, is build a very sustainable, green, long-lasting wall. I'm Silas Hebner with Synergy, and uh, the insulation crew is here uh, just finishing up and uh, we're going to be talking about air sealing, insulation, and best practices. Um, the important thing with insulation is to make sure that it's installed perfectly correctly um, with any voids or gaps or um, places where the insulation isn't in contact with the surfaces that we're insulating um, will actually start to lose the performance or the R value on that insulation. Um, so things that are important, you can see that the crew has gone through and. Um, wherever there's a, uh, two materials that come together, like wood framing um, or here around the windows, they've gone through and they've caulked or used some expanding foam to seal those up for air infiltration. Um, in addition to that, some other things that they've done to air seal is where uh, wire holes go in through the top plate and into the attic. This is important because otherwise we would get attic air to come down in through the insulation and into the wall cavity. And that really uh, affects and, and hurts the performance of the insulation. And with fiberglass insulation, uh, it's very difficult to get the actual rated R value um, because it's very installer sensitive. And so one of the things that needs to be done is the product needs to be cut and fit inside and behind framing, um, similar to what you see in this cavity, and also split around wires uh, and pipes and other obstructions in the cavity to make sure that it's not compressed um, and to not lose any of its R value. Then as you can see over here, what they've done um, with the insulation is made sure that it f completely fills the cavity when they install it so that there are no gaps or voids um, at the actual framing itself. And they've cut it to fit at the bottom. So what we've done on this cavity is made sure that it's cut to fit exactly inside the framing. And where this is especially important is at the bottom where it comes down and makes contact with the top plate. And it's also important that they push the bat in all the way to make sure that it's a full cavity. And the reason that's important is otherwise what can happen is the back edge of this fiberglass can get rolled so that when it gets in the cavity there can be a gap in behind there. And that's especially important if there's no air sealing done, we can get air to come in behind the fiberglass and really um, be a detriment to its performance. So making sure that it's pushed in all the way at the back and fills out to the front. Um, to have a completely full cavity with no gaps or voids. The guys have gotten to work on the fiberglass insulation, so we got out our NIOSH N95 uh, respiratory masks to help um, reduce the fibers. Um, this is a Lesco box, and the purpose for this is to make sure that any penetration through the drywall, um, in this case an electrical box, is airtight and sealed so that we don't have air infiltration or air leakage through the cavity. So what happens is this box fits in behind this, this um, electrical box and every penetration through this box is then sealed. And later on when the drywall is installed, the drywall will be in complete contact with this box and therefore be airtight. Um, the other thing that they've done is cut to fit fiberglass insulation inside the cavity in this box so that we'll still have insulation from front to back in the cavity. Finally, behind the box, they've cut and fit foam board insulation 
and sealed the penetrations and the gaps around that um, with spray foam uh, to make sure that uh, the, the entire enclosure is airtight. This uh, electrical box here has been sealed um, where the wires penetrate into the box so that no attic air can escape down into the house or vice versa. Later on, after the drywaller comes back to install the drywall at the ceiling, the insulator will then come back and insulate the attic space. And what they plan to do in this house is spray a layer of foam about an inch thick throughout the entire ceiling to seal up all the gaps and penetrations so that air doesn't move from the attic to the house or vice versa. Then they plan on blowing an additional R50 of cellulose insulation over the spray foam to reach the R value level that they'd like to have. So what we're looking at now is the air chutes. And the purpose for the air chutes is to allow air to move up into the attic to ventilate the attic appropriately, but disallow air from coming in and blowing the insulation away from the top plate. And the reason that's important is because in this house, the insulation will be piled up to about this thickness. And if we just had this insulation here without the air chute, the air coming in from the soffits would blow that insulation away from the top plate and reduce our total insulation performance in the ceiling. So I installed the fiberglass insulation um, very poorly in this cavity to illustrate um, the potential problems that we can have in each cavity. And you can see if we just shove this bat in the way it is here, we've got obstructions to work around like this bracing here, um, an electrical box towards the bottom, uh, another piece of bracing, and then of course a wire that runs the length of the cavity. Now if we weren't really taking our time or making sure that this bat got installed correctly and we just went ahead and covered it up like this, this bat could actually lose greater than 50% of its rated R value. And so when we're talking about getting the most for our money and the most energy performance and saving the most energy as possible, this entire scenario is really unacceptable. So what would need to happen is to cut and trim out these pieces of insulation so that it would fit tight up against this framing or this boxing. Um, and then also, with the wire, what we want to make sure is that there's insulation gets in behind the wire and also in front of the wire. And finally, cutting and fitting around the other obstructions inside the cavity. The first thing we did is measure the cavity to find out how big the piece of insulation needs to be. We found that the standard width of bat was actually too wide, and so we cut off the excess um, and got rid of it so that the bat will actually fit in the cavity when we install it. The other thing we need to make sure is any obstructions or items that are inside the cavity, um, we take that into account while we're installing the insulation. For example, if we were just to put this insulation in like this, if you peel this back, you can see that this uh, bracing here would actually cause a gap or a void in behind the insulation. So I put the bat into fit, and I'm making an impression where that bracing is so that I can cut a slit in the back side so the bat can envelop that. You can see here how the piece that we've cut or the slit that we've made actually fits into the bottom and up over the top of the bracing so the bat can fill the cavity. So this cavity, as we look at it, looks like any other cavity, but as we peel back the layers here, we can see that there's a lot of wires uh, in the cavity um, obstructing our ability to ins install the insulation. So what they've done is split the bat into two pieces put one piece in behind all the wiring and then the final piece in front of the wiring and installed it correctly and that's how you can reduce heat loss through those cavities. This is um, a smart vapor retarder and this would replace uh, what you traditionally see uh, the layer of plastic that goes up inside um, the house before drywall goes on over the insulation. The reason we would use this product and the reason they call it a smart vapor retarder is because it can actually read and sense how much moisture or humidity um, is inside the wall cavity. 
And uh, during the summer months when the humidity in the wall cavity is much higher than normal, there are little pores in this insulation that, or in this um, vapor retarder that will actually open up and allow that moisture to breathe and dry to the inside of the house. The reason that's important, especially on a sustainably built home, is if we have a lot of moisture inside the cavity and it's not allowed to dry, it can cause problems with mold, uh, rot, causing building materials to decay, um, and you kind of get that uh, odor, that smell that's associated with mold. So this product will help us keep moisture out of the cavity in the, su or in the winter time and help it dry out in the summertime. Around the windows where the rough opening and the window meet is a gap that traditionally doesn't get air sealed very well. What we've done is use low expanding spray foam insulation to fill this gap where traditionally large amounts of air infiltration can enter the home. And we use low expanding spray foam so that we don't bend or bow the windows um, number one for aesthetics and number two so that the windows are still operational. And that literally seals off the air infiltration from coming into the house.